This is the Believe in Pro Wrestling Podcast. Here's Rick Uccino and SP3 on the Believe Podcast Network. Holy moly, what a weekend, and it still ain't over, SP3. It is still not over because we have the Monday after Raw coming up. Tonight, all of the fallout from WrestleMania weekend, night two last night, we saw Johnny Knoxville defeat Sami Zayn in the most bizarre match that I have ever seen in my life, especially live. We saw 76-year-old Vince McMahon having to one-up Stone Cold Steve Austin by wrestling a match last night, but hell, it's going to make headlines worldwide, so Vince is a winner, I guess. And Roman Reigns. Predictable, yes, is your new undisputed universal WWE champion. He beats Brock Lesnar in a match last night that I think was a little bit quicker than a lot of people had expected for the greatest wrestling match, excuse me, the biggest wrestling match of all time. It went, what, six minutes? It seemed like it seemed like, boom, there and, and done. Battle of the Beast and the Tribal Chief, hard hitting, at the very, very, very hard hitting. You'll have to excuse me today. I am mentally physically exhausted sp3 i have had like maybe 16 hours of sleep in the five days that i have been here i'm still wearing the same clothes i was wearing yesterday okay so i'm 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 just a mess uh and i'm gonna let you talk now (laughs) uh yeah wrestlemania 38 is in the books um this was one of the more mixed bag shows that I've ever seen from WWE. You start off with a great WrestleMania moment, Triple H coming coming That's out, so basking good. in the glory of you know people appreciating what he has contributed to this business. He had a fun opener with RK Bro, Street Profits, Alpha Academy. You had the absolute shenanigans that was Sami Zayn versus Johnny Knoxville. You had the great moment with Sasha Banks and Naomi becoming the first African American women's tag team champions. You had a tremendous match between AJ Styles and Edge that you guys in um you guys in Dallas just fell asleep on, so it wasn't as great as it could have been. Then yeah, New Day gets cut short. Then you had the energy of Pat McAfee, oh, and then wow. a whole bucket of water on the whole last. I think it was like the last 30 to 40 minutes of this goddamn show because I walked out of night one with the energy and like, oh my God, when WWE does things right, they hit on all cylinders. But when WWE does things wrong and they re- rely too much on nostalgia, the night one was the right way to do nostalgia. Night two was the absolute wrong way to do nostalgia. Yeah, so night one, right, they hit a titanic mammoth blast, right, like into the upper deck. Last night, they thought that they hit a titanic massive blast into the upper deck, did the bat flip, started doing the dance down to the first baseline, and then dude bro in the outfield just jumps up and snags the home run back from outside the crowd. Okay, that's (laughs) what WWE uh, did last night, but uh, no, yeah. but it was it was the owner of the baseball team that came out and grabbed it from the outfield because it was going so well. I'm yo, I literally was tweeting out because Pat McAfee is my favorite WWE superstar now. Like I don't, I just don't under. You cannot fathom how much I love this man. Like I loved him on commentary. I loved him in NXT because he was somebody that when they originally did the angle with Adam Cole, I was just like, nah, I don't want to see this. I don't want to see this football player trying to do it. He comes off annoying on the pre-show. No, I can't handle him doing this. Him and his and shorts. When- him and his pre-show shorts. Yeah, yeah. I don't want to. I don't want to see him wrestle. But then he cut his first promo, and I was like, okay, that was good. And he cut a second pro. I was like, oh, that was still really good. Then I saw the match with Adam Cole, and I was like, all right, he proved me wrong. I want to see him wrestle again. He showed out. He was the um, probably arguably the MVP of War Games in 2020. Yeah. He comes to SmackDown commentary. He's the best commentator in WWE. And then the energy that he injected WrestleMania with, 
I do. I will never understand why WWE did what they did last night. Yeah, uh, we will, we will. I will dive into that. We'll get. We got so much to get into. First things first. Uh, got to give a shout out to our friends at Bet Online. They have allowed me to to be here this week and for us to keep doing these shows. Uh, Final Four was uh, this weekend, I believe. It was, did the national championship game get played yet? I, I don't even know. Uh, but Tonight. you know. It, okay, so it is tonight. You still have an opportunity to wager on the national championship. Head on over to betonline.ag on your desktop or use your mobile device and sign up today. Receive your 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. Just use our promo code BELIEVE to get started. That is B L E A V. Bet Online remains your number one spot for all of the updated odds, info, along with player props and new contests throughout the year. It's the best source for all your sports wagering needs, including live betting and everyone's favorite Vegas casino and poker games. It is super easy to get started. So join today. Learn why everyone is saying that Bet Online is the fastest and easiest way to wager on sports. Bet Online, where the game starts. And we'll get into everything that happened with Pat McAfee last night because you're right. It was absolutely electric inside AT&T Stadium last night. But remember... What I said on our pre-show, on our prediction show with Renee Paquette, when they had Pat McAfee come out on SmackDown on television, like his first like televised entrance, they had they, they used the SmackDown theme song for it. And I'm like, that ain't going to hit at WrestleMania. They need to do his pre-show before the cameras are rolling entrance. They have to pony up the dough for Seven Nation Army. Well, and to be they, fair, he didn't really make an entrance. It was more he had the meeting with Vince McMahon, and then they were still playing the SmackDown song, and he just came out to it. They never even had his entrance music. They saved it for this moment, which was yeah. smart on WWE's part. Yeah, and well, again, it, it made me nervous because, again, WWE music, you know, they I needed them to pony up the dough for Seven Nation Army. Pat McAfee needed them to pony up the dough for Seven Nation Army and the fans, man. They were chanting Seven Nation Army throughout that entire match. It was electric. It was great. We will dive into all of that when we hop into the five count here on today's episode. But we will start with the lead story. Um, Predictable isn't always bad SP3. And I'm not going to say that last night's match was bad by any stretch of the imagination. But I definitely do believe definitely do believe that this is this is a match that we we've, we've seen before i don't think they they saved anything anything spectacular for this match it was a good match i thought you know they beat the holy hell out of each other the superman punches the kimura lock got me there for a second i'm like are they about to have that? roman reigns lose this via via tap out or brock breaking his arm are they gonna write him off tv for a few weeks then you had paul Heyman just do that little subtle a little subtle push of the ring rope just to allow Roman's fingertips to get there and him to him to grab it. Um, to me last night, look, they, they made the right choice of the winner. It just did not feel like that this was the blow off match to a five, seven year story. After all that build up, after that great video package, I, th- I thought the video package was really good and made it feel like a big fight feel. It had the big fight feel. This was finally the atmosphere that they were waiting for, for Brock and Roman. They had it f- clearly aligned. They had great atmosphere at WrestleMania 31, but it was reverse of what WWE one did with Roman Reigns getting booed, Brock Lesnar getting cheered. This was appropriate for everything. It had that energy, had that start. You felt the, you know, the big fight feel for everything that involved last night. And then it just was a match. It was the same match they did at Crown Jewel. It was literally, it pretty much was down to the Roman Reigns title belt shot. It told a story. That I, and that's what I, I, you know, I've done a list for Wrestle Talk about ranking the Roman Reigns versus Brock Lesnar matches and their best match where it's just one on one. Those two was Crown Jewel because it wasn't finisher spam. It was more of a story, but they put the finisher spam with telling a story here, which I thought it was still one of their better matches that they've had one on one, much better than Greatest World Rumble, which I ranked last, spoiler alert, um, much better than WrestleMania 34, where it was a reverse of what the buildup really was. But this was the, one of their better stories together, but it was still just a, la- a, 
a match. And it came off very lackluster with the way Roman Reigns won. I'm happy for him that he finally got his moment. He finally got to stay, stand there with the title belts. And he's defeated Brock Lesnar at WrestleMania. Got the monkey off his back. The, ske- the spectacle of his entrance and then his victory celebration. Great stuff there. But that was everything before the bells, before the opening bell and before the closing bell. And I don't think they did anything that I'm going to remember too much between bell to bell. I'll tell you what, the finish of the match, and I, I can I can say this for everybody in the press box, the finish of the match made us feel like something else was coming. Because it felt like the finish of the match made it feel like, okay, there's, they got one more trick up their sleeve. They got one more surprise. That can't be the end of the night was that was that finish. And then it was. And I'm just like, oh, okay. Not even any after the cameras were done rolling shenanigans. Brock literally gets up, waves to the crowd, walks away. They play his music, and and, and that was it. Do you think we, we, we see more of Brock Lesnar like tonight? Do you think maybe they try to continue this? Uh, you know, let's just focus on Brock Lesnar because we'll talk about Roman Reigns coming up here in a little bit. Do you think they they actually now branch both of these guys off and do something new with them, or do you expect Brock to take some time off now? I expect Brock to take some time off now. He's pretty much done his version of a full time schedule since pretty much Crown Jewel, like pretty much SummerSlam. He's been periodically, you know, he'll miss a couple of weeks, but he's been very active in comparison to Brock Lesnar of 2017, Brock Lesnar of 2018. So I, I think that he's earned his uh, his time off. And I think the, the next time we see him, it might be a new WWE Undisputed Universal Champion or it might be someone else outside of the title picture that he's going to feud with. But I think that it is the right time for Brock to kind of take time off and this was been one of his best runs as a character both guys have done exceptional character work it's yeah it's just the match itself just didn't hit the way it should have and it was 12 12 just over 12 minutes for a yeah. wrestlemania for a wrestlemania main event so we we talked about Vince McMahon pouring water on Pat McAfee, and we we will get there. But I do want to talk about uh, another big moment that that happened last night, particularly for Sasha Banks. She was zero and six heading into WrestleMania uh, last night. She comes in there with Naomi. Everybody thought that they were the betting favorites. We had talked about whether or not it would be the right time for Sasha to to win her first WrestleMania match. You said yes, absolutely, do it while you have the opportunity to do it. They win the women's tag team title in a, in a match that I thought was really, really good. I was still rooting for Rhea Ripley and, and Liv Morgan, especially after they made their entrance last night, because holy hell, those two just are money together. Absolute money together. Uh, and by the way, Liv Morgan walking down to the ring with a whip was something I didn't know I needed to see until I saw it last night. Uh, and I'm not the only person who said it was, was, you know, saying that out on Twitter. I'm just throwing that out there. But yo. Uh, this was this was a really good moment and then i don't know if you saw the clip that they put out uh, on wwe uh, social media afterwards where they were getting interviewed and then tamina comes up and gives them a big old hug and they had the full t bad reunion um yeah i think they made the right call last night sp3 i was saying this for a month y'all People, people like, oh no, I don't want Sasha Banks with this victory to be a tag team match. Then you're never gonna see a Sasha Banks victory at WrestleMania. Like, this is like, I, I just don't understand some people. You guys think that WWE treats Sasha Banks way better than I've seen her be treated. <laughs> like, you get the victory when you get the victory. Be happy that she got the victory, and this was an historic victory for them because not only did they win but they became the first ever african-american women's tag team champions for the first time in wwe history three black women own championship gold that is huge that is monumental this was like a whole celebration on social media and it's just like why did some of y'all people not want this like i don't understand this like i y'all think that wwe gonna tell a long-term story of oh sasha banks gonna finally win her no it's not gonna happen get it done when it gets done like oh i just 
I get annoyed with fans sometimes. I love y'all that follow the Believe in Pro Wrestling podcast. Only y'all that has subscribed. If you haven't subscribed, it's a good time to do it right now. But yeah, just why would you not want Sasha Banks to get this victory here right now in professional wrestling? Sasha Banks and Naomi are the women's tag team champions. Bianca Belair is the raw tag team, is the raw women's champion. Uh, Tasha Steeles is the first ever Afro Latina knockouts champion for Impact Wrestling, and Jade Cargill is a TBS champion. It is Black Girl Magic. It is Black Excellence. Be happy and stop wanting stuff that WWE don't do. I told y'all before, wear a Vince hat, and this was the right time to just get it done. I'm happy for Sasha. Yeah, I, I am too. And look, I, I was on that train because I'm, I am a sucker for a good story. And I thought that that would be a great story. Uh, clearly, WWE decided that was not something that they were interested uh, in, in doing. So um, there, there are worse ways that she could have won. She should have won her first match a long time ago. And that is something that we, we, we talked about as well. Probably should have won uh, the triple threat at WrestleMania 32. Her and Bailey should have retained the women's tag team titles uh, over the Iconics, especially considering what they did with the Iconics afterwards. And I know a lot of that had to do with the fact that they wanted the Iconics uh, and the Bella Twins to feud over that summer. And then Nikki's injury did not allow that to happen. And then they just did not come up with a plan B. Um, so there was a, a lot of things that they should have done in hindsight, hindsight with Sasha Banks. Uh, but last night was great. You could see how much it meant to her when the three count happened. They did the right thing by letting Sasha Banks get the cover and get the pin uh, last night. And uh, yeah, I, I feel better, right? Like I feel better about the women's tag team division now than I did a few months ago, because you could tell it was pretty clear. They didn't have any plans to use Carmella or Queen Zelina in any way. They, they were sp- space holders basically which sucks for them which so sucks. was Rhea Ripley and Nikki ASH it, yes because they didn't have any other tag teams they have been these titles have been parked but again Rhea and Liv work so incredibly well together and as I found out in person they love working with one another if you have not seen my interview with Rhea Ripley please check it out because uh she does a Liv Morgan impersonation in that uh interview and it's Effing adorable. Um, but I got I gotta show some love, not to interrupt you, but I gotta show some love to Carmella and Queen Zelina. I feel like they played their roles superbly, despite them, you know, getting the raw tag team, I mean the women's tag team titles because they were basically just placeholders. I think they performed really well last night. I would say that uh, Carmella was really the glue of that matchup. Yeah, uh, she did absolutely uh, spectacular. You know who was an underrated part of that matchup was Corey Graves, to be honest with you. Yeah. Like, when 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 she got hit or she got taken out or she didn't get the – when she didn't get the pinfall, when she thought she had the match won and they panned over to Corey Graves, he had this look on his face like, oh, shit, I'm in trouble. Like, somehow this is my fault and I'm going to get yelled at later. Like, it – Part of me wishes they would have gone through with with Carmella winning because they were talking about this big ass celebration that her and like Corey and Carmella were gonna do, and I'm like, okay, I wonder I mean, what that would have looked like. But I'm again, they made the th- right th- that that's the whole reason that they hyped it up is because it wasn't gonna happen, ladies and gentlemen. They oh, were basically teasing a live sex celebration. It ain't happening in this. Yeah. It ain't happening in this PG era, ladies and gentlemen. Well, but at least we, at least we. At least we got. At least we got to see what uh, Carmella is gonna wear for Corey after their wedding day, though. I did like her gear, by the way. Like I thought that was really nice. Uh, again, had a chance to talk to Carmella, and like that was like her biggest concern. Is like, okay, the match I got, that's fine, that's cool. What do I wear? Uh, and her coming down with like the whole wedding dress gimmick because she is getting married. I think either today or, or tomorrow. Uh, that that was really well done. So I, I love the women's tag team match. I'm happy that all eight of those ladies got on the card. I'm happy they gave them some time. But I think I, I, I definitely I'm surprised that Mandy Rose retained the NXT championship over the weekend, right? We didn't get a whole lot of time to talk about Stand and Deliver and we're not going to get a whole lot of time to talk about Stand and Deliver. Mandy and Dolph retained. Dolph makes sense. All right. Dolph makes sense because, you know, Braun Breaker's coming up to the main roster. Fairly soon, at least that was what common sense would say. Mandy retaining, not sure about that one because toxic attraction, look, man, they're needed. They're needed on the main roster. I mean, especially Gigi and Lace, they need 
women's tag teams to continue this going. And I hope that the star power of Sasha and Naomi means that they're actually going to try <laughs> with, with these tag team titles. Uh, now that they're around uh, their ways. But I definitely feel better about where the women's tag team division is today than prior to WrestleMania. It's time to answer the five count on the Believe Podcast Network. Well, if you thought 57-year-old Stone Cold Steve Austin was going to be the, the biggest nostalgia fest of the weekend, him going out there and wrestling a match 20 years after his last one, defeating Kevin Owens in the main event of night one. If you thought that was just going to be so great and there wasn't anything that could possibly be done to shock the fans, as Lee Corso would say, not so fast. Because after Pat McAfee defeated Austin Theory last night in what was the hottest match of the night, and we're not going to talk about him a whole lot, but you got to give Austin theory credit he played his role to a t last night including one of the best stone cold stunner cells i've ever seen in my life by the way i love the whole freaking swim move as he's <laughs> as he's flying around hits the ground pops back up throws down it was it was almost like rock-esque uh the way that he decided to take that stunner last night so uh bravo to austin theory um he played his role to perfection and it was a it was a great match between theory and and Pat McAfee, and Pat McAfee showed out, man, this was such a, a, a big moment for him. The Dallas Cowboy cheerleaders are down there. Seven Nation Army is playing. The crowd is electric. Everybody in the press box is going, oh, 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 oh. It was so damn cool. He gets the football. He punts the damn thing into the uh, upper deck, got one last kick out of him. And then he gets in the ring and he does his damn thing, man. He's jumping, he's doing jumping hurricane ranas with the swagger of a man that has the confidence to wear a bedazzled tank top and a gold chain in a wrestling match. Then he does the whole thing where he does the misses the swanton bomb, but then does a perfect backflip and lands on his feet. No stumbling. Stuck the damn thing. And Austin Theory is like looking at him like, what the fuck? And then fuck? hop straight to the top rope like he was Shelton Benjamin. It was so damn good. And then he, he counters Austin Theory. He pins him with the crucifix. The crowd is going nuts. And then Vince McMahon starts yelling at his protege, like, how you lose? How you going to lose this match, SP3? How you going to lose this match? And then Vince McMahon is staring down Pat McAfee. And I'll give Vince this much credit, right? He got it right, right up until the bell rang, because he gets in the ring. He, he fakes it for a second, teases the crowd, puts the jacket back on. Takes the jacket off, crowd goes nuts. Takes the t-shirt off, or the, the, the button-up shirt off, and, and reveals the body of a 45-year-old man and not a 76-year-old man. He is still absolutely jacked, so i got to give him credit for that. He gets in the ring. Austin Theory attacks uh, Pat McAfee from behind. They should have stopped there. That was the moment, right? That was the moment. But then the bell rings, and Vince McMahon proceeds to wrestle a match at 76 years old. That was a lot of did, – did, did McAfee even get to touch Vince McMahon? Was this, this was basically Vince just literally kicking McAfee for a few minutes. And then the finish of the match was McAfee getting a weak kick to the stomach with a football and Vince McMahon pinning him. And then we get Stone Cold Steve Austin, who comes down to the ring. Crowd loses their mind. Big nostalgia fest. The stunner to to, to Pat, Ma or excuse me, the stunner to Austin Theory. And then the worst damn stunner I have ever seen in my life as Stone Cold gives one final one to Vince McMahon. That fits Vince to a T because he was never good at selling the stunner anyway. Pat, Austin, drinking the beer. He stuns Pat McAfee because, of course, he freaking does. Austin's loving it. He's smiling ear to ear. A lot to explain there, SP3. But Vince wrestling the match at age 76, was that a great nostalgia spot? Or did they ruin Pat McAfee's moment? They ruined Pat McAfee, Pat McAfee's moment by far. Like, Pat McAfee was the biggest baby face not named Stone Cold Steve Austin or Cody Rhodes at WrestleMania. 
Like he got such a, there was such an electricity about his whole, his whole entrance, his performance during the match. Like, ah, oh man, like I'm just like so over, like I, I enjoyed the nostalgia from night one. That was great. I didn't need Austin again. I know y'all popped in Dallas because it's Dallas. It's Texas. It's Stone Cold Steve Austin. There was a thousand other ways to do it than throw a big bucket of water on Pat McAfee's moment by having this man make him look like a dweeb for three and a half minutes. He didn't even touch him. He yeah. got beaten up by Austin Theory. It's supposed to be a disqualification, but they get they say, oh, the referee can't can't disqualify this man. It's like, okay, great. Like, I know this guy's not gonna take a bump. I knew the entire three minutes. I didn't need a five-minute. Oh, is he gonna is he gonna do it? Is he oh 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 is he gonna take off the jacket? Yo, the new day, Seamus and Rich Holland got two minutes. Yeah, they got they two minutes. You cut them. You cut them ridiculously short for this. Come on, man. Like I'm just like, I. This is this is me just frustrated with WWE because they always know how to ruin a good thing. Like they literally ruined Pat McAfee's moment for Vince McMahon to take the worst stunner of all time. The only good thing that came out of this whole thing that they did was. Austin Theory taking one of the best stunner sells of all time, and Pat McAfee drinking a beer while sell selling a stunner. Those were the two best things about everything that happened after the bell of McAfee versus Theory. And there was a thousand other ways to do it. Just have yeah. Vince and Austin Theory jump Pat McAfee, beat him down. You can even do it as long as you did. You took like eight minutes with this whole entire after the bell with McAfee and Theory. You will use that eight minutes, do a long beat down because WWE loves long beatdowns and then the glass shatters yes we're going to be asking where were you 10 minutes ago stone cold but it's still oh, you know, he he's, he's he old these you know he can't I, yeah I, yeah i get it every time he walks it sounds like styrofoam but it doesn't <laughs> it doesn't matter like there was a thousand other ways to do this than having 76 year old Vince man basically jerk himself off for 10 minutes like that's that's literally what we saw he 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 literally was like you know what i've never won at wrestlemania so i'm gonna win at wrestlemania i'm yeah. gonna beat yeah. i'm gonna i'm gonna make pat mcafee look like a dweeb because you know he just beat a wwe superstar and he's just a commentator he's just a punter he's not even a quarterback i'm gonna beat his ass and i'm gonna beat him one two three in the middle of the ring i've lost to my son Shane. I lost to 60-year-old Bret Hart. I lost to Shawn Michaels. I've lost to all I've lost to Hope. I lost to Terrence from Florida. I, I've lost to all these people at WrestleMania. I'm gonna get mine. Cause this, like I said, as like I said during the prediction show, like I've been saying for weeks, this is Vince McMahon's WrestleMania. I said that to y'all. I said that to y'all. And the the he literally, he literally, like I said yesterday with Cody, we literally saw Cody's catchphrase come to life. Y'all literally saw my catchphrase for WrestleMania come to life <laughs> as this was Missing Man's WrestleMania. This is, this is such an instance of less is more, right? Like I didn't have a problem with anything that happened. Literally anything that happened until the bell rang. Until the bell rang and we got that three-minute match and that was what it was. If that's all that they were able to do or all Vince was willing to do, they shouldn't have done it. Um, I, I get the headlines. I get the, you know, the, the Vince did get the pop. He always gets a great reaction. Again, 76-year-old Vince McMahon wrestling a match. This is something that we we talked about. It was listed on the internal run sheet weeks ago. We talked about the the, the validity, of, validity of this and whether or not they would actually go through with it. And then Vince actually goes through with it. But what they should have done is right after the DQ spot, the, after, right after they sold the fact that there wasn't going to be any disqualifications because Vince is the boss, Austin Theory should have gotten in the ring. He should have started beating the crap out of Pat McAfee. Vince McMahon should have been kicking him and laughing and standing around the ring. And then you have Stone Cold Steve Austin come down there, kick his ass, stomp some mud holes, stun Austin Theory, 
It's on the boss. He throws Pat McAfee over top Vince McMahon. One, two, three. The crowd goes nuts. He starts celebrating, drinking beer with Pat McAfee, and then he stuns Pat McAfee. Yeah. That would have been. We, we just gave you two better ways to do this than what they did. <laughs> like yeah. yo, like they Vince never did not need to go over. Because if you if you if you follow the rabbit hole, right? Austin Theory this week, or well, last week now because it's Monday, Austin Theory pinned clean as a sheet both the United States and Intercontinental Champions just to lose to a commentator, a fantastic athlete and performer in Pat McAfee. He's not just a normal commentator, I understand that, but he still lost to a full-time commentator, and then that full-time commentator lost to a 76-year-old man by getting kicked in the gut with a football. If that's not a microcosm of how you respect your mid-card championships, I don't know what is. But in a bubble, there were a lot of things to like about this. I was highly sports entertained, and that was definitely a theme of night two. I think the moments and the wrestling was better on night one by far, but the sports entertainment aspect of everything was just outstanding. And I'm going to make a quick edit because uh, I, 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 I said that, so I want to get to this first. You want to talk about being highly sports entertained i don't know sp3 if i witnessed the best or the worst match ever last night but i was laughing my ass off as was everybody else in the press box by the way love the atmosphere of the wwe press box it is so much better than the nfl or the mlb because they kind of just let you be fans a little bit like you're, you're not going to get to do everything that you get to Did do you get the good press box food too uh, did yeah, they had a great uh, spread nice, there. Nice. Uh, I, I, I'm, by the way, thank you to WWE for everything. Front row press box, spot eleven. That's a prime spot. Got invited to the Cody Rhodes of uh, Secret Media Scrum. I had a great damn weekend. By the way, you can watch that entire Scrum right now up on the Believe in Pro Wrestling uh, YouTube channel. Got to ask the second to last question. Me and Nick Hausman almost had to almost had to fight uh, over the last question. Uh, it was a fun little exchange there, but. Um, yeah, man, it was uh, it was quite the weekend. It was quite the spot, but this was this was I I I gotta say the highlight of the night for me. SP three was this match right here, and even though they both lost, you couldn't help but be extremely happy for both Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn after this weekend. They are both stars. They are both great professional wrestlers, and they are both great sports entertainers. They just get it. They fit well in WWE. But I'll ask you, Johnny Knoxville defeating Sami Zayn with a giant mousetrap. Can't believe I just said that sentence. Best or worst match you ever saw? This was the best version of Sami Zayn versus Johnny Knoxville. Like, it's not the best match I ever saw. It's not the worst match I ever saw. But this was the best version, and this was exactly what I expected from them. I expected jackass shenanigans. I expected jackass run-ins with the perfect run-ins because you had party boy Chris Pontius come out, do his dance. To take off his clothes, his butt cheeks was clapping. Pat McAfee on commentary was great during this whole exchange. And then the star of this whole entire match, we my man, man we man, coming under the ring. The, the pop, the pop, the only two of the biggest pops at WrestleMania 38 night two were for Pat McAfee and we man, ladies and gentlemen. This is and Johnny Knoxville. This is the world we are living in because that crowd loved Johnny Knoxville, they absolutely adored we man, we man kicking Sammy Zane's ass, and now we have the new. Hogan slamming Andre in we man slamming Sammy Jane. I said it on I said it on on Twitter. I will say it here. We man greater than Terrence from Florida. That's how I really and truly feel. That was amazing moment. That was electricity in the air. The atmosphere was great. Johnny Knoxville just knew he had good timing on everything. Uh, like this was just shenanigans at its best. That was a sports entertainment match in the best way possible. I laughed. It was a comedy match. Sami Zayn played the perfect foil. He is amazing he is amazing yes. at what he does he got the bag and now he's going to be in 
even more than this man, 76 years old. Sorry, Vince. This is the match that TMZ and other media outlets are going to look at, and they're going to be like, hey, this is what we're going to promote from WrestleMania night two. Not Roman Reigns winning all the gold. Not this man wrestling at 76. We are going to we are gonna p- promote Johnny Knoxville defeating Sami Zayn because that is the type of stuff that you can have a casual fan watch, and they will get some entertainment out of it. Either it's so bad they like have or it's just exactly what they wanted from this and for me that's what it was as a longtime jackass fan this was just nostalgia and in the feels 12 year olds sp3 was popping for everything from mark henry and may young son slapping the crap out of sammy Zayn that was such to- a great spot to to the to the to the fake leg low blow the the table spot through the mousetrap table and then eventually even Johnny Knoxville when the mousetrap went aw- awry this man has so much experience he knew how to fix it he knew how to fix it on the fly Johnny Knoxville was great Sami Zayn is amazing I love this match like I said I I I don't know what to quantify it I don't even think you could call it a, a wrestling match but it was spectacular. It was everything that we could have hoped uh, that they did. And I even loved how it started. I loved how it started where Sami Zayn, so pissed off over everything that the Johnny Knoxville had been doing, he just runs and gives him a haluva kick, just knocks his freaking block off. And I'm like, oh, Sammy's pissed. And then he takes his time, and he's beating the crap out of him, and he's just loving it and you know living his best life. Um, yeah, man, I, I was curious to see what he would be willing to do in this match. And and I even asked Renee Young that, and she said, I think he'd be willing to do a lot. He was willing to do a lot. And hats off to you, Sami Zayn. It was uh, and, absolutely spectacular. And I just got to say, Sami Zayn and Kevin Owens, they had a, a good match last year at WrestleMania, but it got lost in the shuffle. Like after six yeah. months, you don't you didn't really remember that match because they got less than 10 minutes. Six months from now, a year from now, I will remember Kevin Owens versus Stone Cold Steve Austin and Johnny Knoxville versus Sami Zayn. These guys got the bag, and they had much more memorable matches at Mania this year. Absolutely, and I'll say this much before we move on. I look at all the fun that they had last night, and I go, okay, why can't we get some semblance of that every monday or every other monday if you're going to do that kind of stuff for johnny knoxville can we spice up the 24 7 title division by actually making it just a little bit hardcore just a little bit you can use trash cans you can use stop signs you can use the cookie sheets man i missed a good old-fashioned raven cookie sheet blast all right i missed it that was the nostalgia for me because i never really watched jackass but i love johnny knoxville i think he's very underrated actor by the way um but yeah, man, I'm sitting there and I'm going, why can't we get this shit on Monday? Why does it always got to be the freaking, you know, roll up schoolboy of doom? Why can't we get somebody doming somebody with a trash can and a one, two, three? It's not hard. It's all I'm asking for. It's all I'm asking for. So we talked about how Roman Reigns defeated Brock Lesnar in the main event of WrestleMania 38. And uh, number three here on the five count SP3, we we're now looking ahead because it is all about what is next. A lot of questions hopefully will be answered tonight. The Raw after Mania, always some some surprises and everything. I'm expecting some rematches because that's what WrestleMania Backlash is. But that's just what the title of the pay-per-view tells you is going to happen. I expect we'll probably see Bianca and Becky at least one more time. Uh, I think we're probably going to see a couple other rematches as well. But... The question now is, there's one champion in WWE, the undisputed WWE Universal Heavyweight Champion of the World. His name is Roman Reigns. One thing that I think WWE did well, really well this weekend, is they at least created some options. They created some options this week as to who could next challenge for the WWE Championship or whatever the hell we're going to call this thing now. Who should it be, SP3? Who should be next in line for Roman Reigns? Yeah, I think I said this yesterday that WWE came up with three options to dethrone Roman Reigns, you know, in in the next couple of months in Cody Rhodes, 
Braun Breaker getting called up to the main roster. He seems to be groomed, for, being going to be groomed for something big. And Gable Steveson, who had a nice little moment to start off the show with the belly to belly over the head to uh, Chad Gable, his his namesake, uh, Gable to Gable uh, suplex. <laughs> um, um, but those are three for down the road. I think the soonest you can do one of those is like SummerSlam. I think that right now my favorite to win the money in the bank is Cody Rhodes. I think that would be a nice way him winning money in the bank and then him doing a Rob Van Dam and calling his shot at SummerSlam would be great in my opinion yeah. and be a baby face type of move. Um, and as far as who's going to challenge from next, they also did a great job of creating challengers to get us to that that destination because you still got WrestleMania backlash. You got your hell in a cell. You got your money in the bank before we eventually get to get to another big show at SummerSlam. Well, Money in the Bank is now a big show because that's going to be in a stadium in Las Vegas. But the next challenger, it depends on if it's going to be from Raw or it's going to be from SmackDown, but they have an option on both. Bobby Lashley, who defeated Omos, he set up as a baby face. I called it. I called it. I I said, I was like, I I had to, I I think I changed my pick like three or four times between our prediction show and that true heel heat on one true heel heat 169. I was like, you know what? I'm going to go with Lashley, Lashley to win this one because I don't think Omos is, is ready for that big of a push. And you don't have Lashley just come back on Monday and then lose. And then when I saw his entrance, I was like, Oh, thank God I made that, that change because Bobby Lashley, that's a superstar entrance. You don't, have them lose after that and the way the the match was booked i thought it was booked very good to go around the limitations of omas but bobby lashley is a major baby face got a big pop from that crowd in dallas he's a great option on monday night raw and then when you turn to smackdown you got drew mcintyre who just kicked out of the end of days the same move that defeated roman reigns last and this is a matchup that delivered at survivor series 2020 so it depends on if they're going to make the challenger for monday night at Raw, which I think they should because I feel like that's the hotter option and that you can give Drew maybe a, one more win to really heat him up so he's an option for maybe like Hell in a Cell or even Money in the Bank in the stadium, but Bobby Lashley or Roman Reigns should be I mean, Bobby Lashley or Drew McIntyre should be the next to challenge Roman Reigns for the undisputed WWE Universal Championship. Yeah, I actually put this poll up uh, on my Twitter uh, at Rick Uccino, uh last night, uh, just kind of throwing out a few options. And two of the options that I put up there, by the way, uh, were uh, Drew McIntyre and Bobby Lashley. The other one was Cody Rhodes, or you could choose other and, and tell me who you believe it would be. Cody Rhodes is the overwhelming winner right now of that poll. If you want to vote, you can go up there and you can vote right now. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm with you. I think it either has to be at this point, it's got to be Bobby Lashley. Right. And yeah, I think he, I think he has an even more um, and no disrespect to Drew thought he had a great match. I think it's been long overdue uh, since uh, for, for us to get back to Drew McIntyre and Roman Reigns. Um, you don't have to rush into it. You got all summer. You got plenty of time that you can get back into that and, and have a banger of a match. And yeah, again, give him another win, maybe a little bit more of a marquee win than, than happy than the previously undefeated happy Corbin. Um I think it's got to be Bobby Lashley. He's got he's got the claim to it, right? I remember last night looking over to uh, Graham Matthews of Bleacher Report, and I'm saying, man, they made the right call. Because if Omos wins that match last night, how do you not have him be the next person to challenge Roman Reigns? And he ain't ready for that spot. He's just not ready for that spot. Bobby Lashley was the WWE champion until he got hurt. This man was the WWE, beat Brock Lesnar, won the WWE championship. All right. And then he's going into hell cell as WWE champion. He gets hurt. And then the next time we see him, he's going to lose to Omos, who's still really, really green. No, they couldn't do that. And I think they knew that they couldn't do that. So, yeah, I think it's got to be Bobby Lashley. He is the one that he, he never lost WWE championship. He's got a claim. He's got a claim. It makes sense. Roman versus Lashley would absolutely bang. So, yeah, sign me up for Bobby Lashley, hands down. Uh, one of the most anticipated matches of the card last night, uh, SP3, was the Edge and AJ Styles dream match. What do they call it? Two generational superstars going one-on-one -on -one for the first time ever. Edge wins in what was, I think, a little bit of a slower-paced match than some people had expected it to be. And maybe that's why the crowd was a little bit flatter uh, than what they were anticipating this match to be. 
I loved it. I thought it was a great storytelling. I thought it was great in ring work. Um, I'm always down to watch Edge do his thing in the ring. AJ Styles delivered. But it was the end of the match that I was most anticipated. I wanted to see how they would do this. And I I was hoping Edge would win because I thought an AJ Styles victory would throw water all over this new character, this new better version Edge. Can't be better and then lose your first match to AJ Styles. That was just my opinion. So how were they going to do it? They get Damian Priest on the WrestleMania card. After all, he shows up, provides just enough of a distraction. Didn't get involved in the match. He just stood there. AJ Styles was able to look at him and go, the hell? All right, screw it. I'm going for the uh, the phenomenal forum. He gets caught with a spear. Great closing spot, I thought. And then we get Damian Priest aligning himself with Edge. And all of a sudden, vindication on my part. We talked about this earlier in the week last week. Now, I'm not sitting here saying they're going to be called uh, the, the the grand jury, but we talked about that, um, that, that trademark the WWE made. You thought maybe it would be a WWE show. I still think that's a good idea. You could still end up being right in the end. I said, boy, wouldn't it be great with Edge on top of his mountain of omnipotence talking about not being judged and judging this person and judging that person. Wouldn't it be great if they took some underutilized or misused superstars and put them alongside Edge and immediately give them a fresh coat of paint and revitalize some people's careers. And it looked like last night was hopefully the start of just that. I didn't name Damian Priest specifically, but I am in love with Damian Priest and Edge being aligned with one another. And this is even some long-term storytelling. When Edge first came back and he started teasing all these, these matches and he was doing all these like little backstage segments, remember, man, we got that one little Damian Priest and Edge exchange where Edge gave him the rub a little bit, telling him how much he, you know, he likes him and to keep going and this, that, and the other thing. This is a big deal for Damian Priest. I have been so worried about Damian Priest's booking over the last six months that I thought he was going to go by the wayside. It ain't happening with him being aligned with Edge. Ain't no way. This is also a great way to keep Edge on the show and not like have to use him and, and work up that bump card. He can still do his fantastic character work and not have to wrestle nearly as much because now you can rely on the enforcer of what is hopefully going to be a group in Damian Priest. I love this. What say you? Yeah, I, I really like this. I like the idea when, um you know, Fightful uh, reported it, but it came from you first. You thought about this, went the grand jury uh, uh, trademark, and it does make sense with everything he said, especially the promo that he did on Monday Night Raw taking us back to his judgment day uh type of <laughs> type of uh uh poster and with the little the little thing with the yeah it was great stuff and this leads in nicely to what they did last night i just feel like honestly i felt like what edge and styles did in the ring was really good i just felt like y'all fell asleep Y'all fell asleep in Dallas. Y'all just y'all just fell asleep. Y'all like, oh, let's let's rest up. We got Roman and Brock to go. We got we got Pat McAfee. We're gonna sing his song. Let's let's rest up during Edge and and Styles because it had a slow start to it and it wasn't as fast paced as like Cody and Seth was the the day prior. And I think that that kind of took the juice out of it a little bit where I thought that this could have been like a four and a half star classic on WrestleMania. It was like three and three quarters for me, four stars at best. But yeah, three and three quarters is what I would probably rate the match. But this right here was nice to kind of give us a foreshadowing for what's to come in the future. And it seems like WWE had a plan by turning Damian Priest because it made this transition very nice. And like you said, there's been a, a whole bunch of seeds planted with this. They've had more than one uh, backstage interaction, which was really random at the time, but this is the payoff for it. Yeah. And I hope that they put more people into this group, put the Viking Raiders yes. into this group, put Tommaso Ciampa. If you're going to bring him to the main roster, this is a perfect role to put him in with hey, this like group. It's like you read here. my tweet last night. <laughs> so no, I didn't. I didn't actually. Uh, this is this is all the stuff I said on Sports Kita when the first when uh when the first, when the report first dropped with Fightful. These are all the people that I kind of said to to put in this group. So it kind of makes sense with uh, Edge that 
he's going to be a leader. He can establish this group. You can even bring in like Beth Phoenix and then bring in Rhea Ripley to turn on Liv Morgan and join this group oh. as well. I would love that. I would love that just to make Rick upset. So... <laughs> No, but I think that this is a good plan because WWE doesn't have a lot of stables. They don't really have stables at all on the main roster because they refuse to re to refer at, to Woods and Kingston as uh, New Day. So they don't really have any stables or they don't have a name for Sheamus and Rich Holland and Butch yet. So this is like a, an established stable. Hopefully tonight on Raw, we get the official name. If it's the Grand Jury or whatever they choose it to be, I think this is a good setup and something good for Damian Priest coming out of WrestleMania, a WrestleMania that he missed after last year arguably stealing the show. It was good to see him here. Yeah, uh, I put out a list of superstars like before the show that I wanted to see on the card last night. Uh, there were five of them. Uh, I was like, probably going to get none of them, but I'll, I'll accept one. And Damian Priest being on that list and him showing up, that was that was good for me. I'm wondering, though, because you talk about the start of this match being you know kind of cooled off. I'm wondering if that has a lot to do with the fact with the music, right? Because both superstars came down with these kind of very slow, methodical. Talk about Electric with Pat McAfee. Seven Nation Army lit that crowd up, man. And what usually happens for an edge match? He comes down Metalingus and it gets the crowd freaking riled up. I think maybe the entrances, as cool as Edge's was, I think the entrances kind of put the crowd to sleep a little bit. I think there's some validity to that. It kind of sucked the energy out of the room where Edge, usually you're up on your seat and he's jumping around and he's getting everybody fired up. There was none of that. There was no firing. There was no firing up the crowd beforehand. And I'm wondering uh, if that played a role in it. But I, I, I thought his entrance was dope though. It was like a mixture so of, it was like Triple H meets the brood in a lot of ways and, with the throne. With, a little bit. Take her in there as well. Nah, nah, I don't want to mention Undertaker. Um, but yeah, it, it was like Triple H with his throne at WrestleMania 22 makes it mix with the brood with him coming out of, coming out of the, this, you know, the bottom of the stage with the fire and everything i thought the entrance was really cool probably top three four for the weekend because i put bianca belair's number one for me that i put pat mcafee's that i really like sasha and naomi's entrance and then i would probably put edge i think edge is going to be taking over uh the triple h shtick of having the cool ass entrance at wrestlemania now or at least just the cool ass entrances i mean going back to SummerSlam where he did the full-on brood entrance and then played metalingus that was so damn smart um so yeah they're they're letting edge do a lot of really really cool shit now but uh yeah this is this is good i mean the aj styles and edge thing that's going to continue uh it, it's gonna it, this is a story that has legs Give me Edge and Priest versus AJ and Balor. That's what I want. That, they set it up already. Give me that. Don't give me another Edge and AJ Styles match. Give me Edge and Priest versus AJ and Balor at WrestleMania Backlash. And then that's the night that you can introduce the next person to get inducted into the grand jury, whether that's Tommaso Ciampa, the Viking Raiders, or, or somebody else. <clears throat> and I do like the idea of putting a, a, um, a woman in the group as well, because they, they they really don't do that anymore. Um, there's a lot of great options. I, I, I do love Rhea and Liv, though. Don't, don't, don't take that from me. Um, there were a lot of things to really, really like uh, about WrestleMania weekend. I thought WrestleMania 38 overall was a fantastic show. I had so much more fun watching this show live than I did last year right this this just this just hit on so many levels was it perfect absolutely not but it just hit really really well but i think we we both agree for the third straight year of doing the night one night two format as much as i love it from a timing standpoint night two just was not able to live up to the magic of night one so the last question today does the two night format still work for you or do you think that less is more. John Alba, our good friend, friend of the program, ad free shows. He put this out there, said, "Hey, look, there was still a lot of filler uh, on this, even though it's some of as good as it was." So, would you prefer the one night and just have the really, really, really important stuff and just make sure everything's a home run, or do you like the two night format with a, a, a just a lot of fun shit thrown in? 
I was a big proponent of the two night format because I'm always for more people getting opportunities and the fact that you know Bianca and Sasha Banks got to main event night one I felt like last year I would I would say yes 100% the two night format works because night one had Sasha and Bianca night two had Reigns Brian and Edge which Although I love Bianca and Belair, that was the better work rate type of matchup that I was looking for and a great way to close out night two. And I think that the the reason why people are kind of saying this, like John Alba, is that, yeah, there was a lot of filler on night two. There was a lot of filler in the first half of night one. So if you put those two together, it would make one great show. But I'm sorry, like WrestleMania 35, you would say, oh, that could have been one great show. It wasn't. A lot of people went to their first WrestleMania, and I asked a lot of those people, how was it? And they just said it was too long. So I think less is more, but less is more in the two-night format. Less is more. Like, like you could have had a better night if one little change that I would have made for night one is you don't put Ronda and Charlotte on night one. Don't put Ronda and Charlotte on night one, especially in that spot, because they were yeah. never going to win in that spot. You put it on night two. And I think that I think we would be looking at both shows a lot better, because then you could have gave all that time to New Day, Sheamus, and Rich Holland on night one. You could have yeah. just swapped that out. Like It's very simple. WWE always works harder, not smarter. And it just that's that's the real issue here. And I think that's the issue why a lot of people have their their problems with the two night format is because we don't need Uso versus Shinsuke Nakamura and Rick Boots. We don't need Shame uh um uh, Seamus and Rich Holland versus the New Day, honestly. I love the New Day. I want to get them on the card, but hey, throw throw all four of those teams in one matchup for the SmackDown tag team champions. And I think everybody would be looking at this these two shows a lot better and a lot a lot it goes a lot smoother put six matches on each night of the event do a three and a half hour show instead of a four hour show and i think that both nights would have came off better so i'm a proponent of the latter do you think less is more yes i think less is more but less is more with this two night format i don't want to take away the two night format because that's going to take away a lot of spots on these wrestlemania cards so two night format but less is more in the two night format, ladies and gentlemen. I um, I can't disagree with anything you just said, and I, I I'm with you. I think I think the structure of both cards needs to be a little bit better. I thought it was extremely extremely weird when they announced that both women's title matches were going to be taking place on night one. I'm like, okay, that seems like you're leaving a really, really big match off of night two. And like, what are you going to fill it with? Well, it turns out they filled it with Vince McMahon versus Pat McAfee. That's what they, that's what they filled it with. So that's why they did what they did. They had Stone Cold Steve Austin wrestle on night one. They had Vince McMahon wrestle on night two. So that's what they decided to do this week in a bubble. I understand it. Night two execution could have been much, much better as we discussed, but I love the two night format. I'm still a big proponent of the two night format. I remember WrestleMania 35 as an example. Me, biggest Becky Lynch homer in the world, right? Waiting up until 1 o'clock in the morning. And I am dozing off during this match that I waited all night for because I had been watching seven hours of wrestling at that point. And I'm like, I just want this to be over. I couldn't enjoy it. The crowd was asleep, too, during that. It's not that that was a bad match or people didn't care about it. It was 1 o'clock in the morning morning all right like it's 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 a hard ask of any wrestling fan to sit there and watch it that long um so i love the two-night format i especially love the fact that you can now roll in smackdown hall of fame wrestlemania night one wrestlemania night two monday night after raw or um, the raw after monday night i don't know why i always screw that up but anyway uh i love that boom 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 marathon and really make it like WrestleMania weekend, and it's such a great spectacle. You had access. You, you threw in stand and deliver. I wish they could find a more primetime spot for that, but okay, I get it. They put it on at noon. That's fine. Um, it was, Everybody here had a ton of fun this weekend, right? That's the most important thing. Wrestling should be fun. It hasn't always been fun watching WWE uh, over the last two years, okay? We watch it because we, uh, for, I mean, 
there were some points where it was hitting. It was really fun in the build up to thirty five. Like it was fun watching it, even though some and of the things. No, no, they TV. ruined. They ruined the Becky Charlotte Ronda uh, storyline. They tried to ruin the the Kofi Mania storyline. They did. You. They just paid off on all those things, so you think about it and you remember it more fondly. WWE really, in my opinion, like the consistency on the week to week product was really good. Two thousand sixteen, two thousand seventeen, and then it kind of lost the formula in the last couple of years. They get it right some, some time to time and they got it right on night one. But yeah, I agree. The The two night format needs to stay because more people get opportunities. That's what I'm all for. Yeah. Oh, by the way, I wasn't also like really diving into like the wrestling journalism stuff until like after WrestleMania 35. So that might be, I wasn't looking at things from an analytical standpoint and yeah, things ended up my way that year. So maybe I do look at it a, a little bit differently, but um yeah, man, this is such a great, it's such a great event. It's such a, it's like a, it's almost like a wrestling festival at this point. It just works so well. WWE probably makes fist loads of cash uh, off of everything this weekend. And uh, yeah, they're going to do two nights again in, De in in Los Angeles next year. And I'm, I'm looking forward to it. Uh, guys, thank you so much uh, for not only listening to uh, all 60 minutes of this half hour podcast, but uh, following along and clicking on everything that uh, we got put up this week. Uh, I, I'm, I'm drained because I've done so much stuff and throw so much content onto this channel. I appreciate you guys for tuning in and watching everything and liking and sharing and subscribing. We picked up a ton of subscribers this week, picked up a ton of followers this week. Thank you so much. If you like what we do, spread the word. Uh, really, really appreciate you guys. And uh, Sid, I am going to go pack. I'm going to go catch my flight and I am going to sleep for three hours straight. I'm going to close my eyes. I'm going to be back uh, in Cincinnati at enough time to watch Raw tonight. And then we will do one more show. One more show. The big Raw After Mania review tomorrow, 7 a.m. You got a lot of stuff to promote. You you were working more than I was uh, this week uh, at home there in New York. So tell the fine folks about True Heel Heat for you. Uh, yes, go over and subscribe to the True Hill Heat YouTube channel. I want to thank uh, Romeo and Josh who joined me on the True Hill Heat takeover uh, for Believe in Pro Wrestling for the AEW review yet uh, this week, this past week. And you can check out them on a bunch of great content. We did watch alongs for WrestleMania Night 1, WrestleMania Night 2, Stand and Deliver, AEW Dynamite, NXT, Blunt Impact uh, with Impact Wrestling, Joey Janela Spring Break Part 1 and Part 2. We did a watch along for WrestleCon Super Show, uh, Bloodsport for the culture. Check out our Twitch channel, twitch.tv forward slash True Hill Heat Wrestling. We're very close to 50 followers over there trying to breach affiliation with uh, Twitch. So a bunch of great things happened throughout the week. We got a bunch of great support subscribers over there. So thank you so much for anyone who is a Believe in Pro Wrestling podcast fan or a fan of Rick Uchino that has jumped over there to the True Hill Heat YouTube channel. So go over there, check it out. I've also done work with Wrestle Talk, Sports Keto Wrestling, a uh, bunch of other places throughout the week. So you can check out all of that. True Hill SP3 on the Twitter machine is where I post most of that stuff and my writing as well. Just realized my laptop's about to die because I didn't plug it in. So let's go ahead and decide to, <laughs> to end this. Oh, uh, man. Appreciate you guys. Thank you so much. Um, yeah, we'll be back. You've been watching the Believe in Pro Wrestling podcast brought to you by Bet Online.